So on a previous video, I did my initial impressions on DaVinci Resolve 17. So that was back in November 2020. And at the time, it was still in beta. But now five months later, we do have the official release of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I thought I would do a follow up video with some pros and cons and thoughts from somebody who is basically a newbie to DaVinci Resolve, but at the same time, who really loves using this video editor. This is by far my favorite video editor, whether it's free or paid. And it's definitely one that is pro level, but at the same time, it's something that is accessible to anyone because you can use the free version, which is what I'm using here. So let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons of DaVinci Resolve 17. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. Now, before I get to the pros and cons, let me give you a little bit of background on my use of DaVinci Resolve and the hardware that I'm working with. Now, I myself am not a professional video editor and DaVinci Resolve is really made for the pro and commercial world. And so there are so many features available in here. So I definitely won't be covering everything that is available on this tool. I'm primarily gonna be covering the pros and cons from my use case. And so a lot of these things that I'm gonna be talking about, it's really gonna be basic, or maybe it might not even be relevant to your use case. And so that's first and foremost. And then secondly, let's go ahead and look at my hardware because I think a lot of people might be concerned that you know my use case might not be the same as theirs because of the fact that we have different hardware and that's definitely the case. And so here I am using an Intel Core i7-6700K. It's running four gigahertz. I do have 32 gigs of RAM. And in terms of my storage, I am running the primary operating system and most of what I use is off of SSDs, but I also have some mechanical storage hard drives for longer term storage. And in terms of my GPU, I am using an AMD RX 470 with four gigs of RAM. And so that's what I'm working with in order to use DaVinci Resolve. And at least for my use case, most of what I need, it is enough. And at the same time, the version of DaVinci Resolve that I'm currently using is the free version. So I'm not using the studio version, but I do plan to upgrade to that at a later date. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get to the pros of using DaVinci Resolve 17. And so the first pro that I wanna talk about is the actual overall performance of DaVinci Resolve. I think that they made a lot of optimizations to DaVinci Resolve 17, especially when I'm using the proxy modes and I'm using this timeline proxy mode at half resolution or quarter resolution. Everything just seems to run faster and snappier. And I really didn't have too many problems even in the past with DaVinci Resolve performance, but it seems like with every single version, they try to improve it. And this is especially important if you're gonna be working with more complex projects and 4K video files, which a lot more people are doing. And at the same time, I've noticed that even when I use this compared to other video editors like Shotcut, KDLive, OpenShot, which are open source video editors that require less in hardware, whenever I use these side by side, DaVinci Resolve still works better especially when it comes to way more complex projects where DaVinci Resolve, it just handles that a lot better with the same exact hardware that I'm already using. And so I definitely got to give a big thumbs up to DaVinci Resolve when it comes to the whole performance improvements that they've made in 17. And so another pro that I'm seeing is in the cut page where they've now added the inspector. And so this makes things a lot easier whenever you are using the cut page. And at the same time, whenever you're moving from the cut to editor page, you have the same options available, which is really nice. It just makes things working on different portions of DaVinci Resolve more seamless. And it definitely helps the overall workflow, especially if you're going back from the cut to edit page. So another very welcome addition. So a big feature that DaVinci Resolve added that I wasn't expecting, but I'm so glad that they did, was this whole feature called 3D Keyer. And so if you go to your open effects and go to filters, you see a no option down here called 3D Keyer. And so what this is primarily used for, as you could probably tell here, is to do green screen or chroma keys. And before you would have to go do this in Fusion, which really wasn't an easy way to do it, even though this is probably the better way to do it if you really wanna fine tune your chroma key and green screen. But in this case, 3D Keyer make things really easy to do. It still gives you a lot of powerful options uh, for your chroma key, 
but overall it just helps to make the edit page even more powerful useful and at the same time it makes doing things like green screen and chroma keys so much easier and intuitive versus having to go into fusion which still well it's not really easy for most people to use and i'm still learning how to use fusion myself and so the 3d care a very very awesome option for all the people out there who loves doing these type of green screen videos and so the final and biggest pro with davinci resolve 17 is the ability to preview your filters transitions titles generators plus they've added so many new transitions and open effects filters so let me show you how this is so powerful when it comes to video editing. So say for example, you were thinking of adding a dissolve effect, right? And you were wondering like, how might that look like? Well, all you have to do now is go to the actual transition and then you can preview it right here by simply just taking your mouse and going over the effect, you know, from beginning to end. And at the same time, you could do this for a variety of different effects. See here, Here's this effect. And it's all done in real time, which is super awesome. So this was the one big feature that was missing from DaVinci Resolve that's available in other video editors like PowerDirector. But now that they've added this, just these one set of features alone uh, pretty much makes this the best video editor out there for me, especially if you're talking about a free video editor. And then you could do the same thing to titles. You know, they've added previews here. Plus, they've added so many more titles for you to use. And a lot of these, they are not, you know, easy titles. You know, they have a lot of cool effects uh, with animation. So you could definitely use these for your videos. And if you try to do this yourself in other video editors, well, it would be very difficult to do. But in this case, DaVinci Resolve provides this for free, you know. And so there are a lot here. And at the same time, there's also a whole bunch of different open effects filters that they've added here as well and not everything here is free of course some of these you're going to have to get the studio version to use but what they have provided here is just incredible so this is my favorite feature out of all the new features that they've added to davinci resolve and i'm pretty sure it's going to be improved over time for serious youtubers check out tubebuddy the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. And so now that we're seeing my pros for DaVinci Resolve 17, let's go ahead and look at the cons because in this case, at least for me, it really doesn't have much to do with the video editor and it has more to do with the availability on other platforms. Now DaVinci Resolve is available for all major platforms. So Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac, and even Linux. And Linux is the one that I actually have a problem with because DaVinci Resolve is really made to work with Red Hat based distributions like CentOS. And so it's not made to work with the most popular Linux distribution, which is Ubuntu and Ubuntu based distributions like Linux Mint, which is the primary operating system that I use. Now, I can understand why Blackmagic doesn't do this, you know, for a number of reasons, but I think the main reason is there's just simply not a lot of people in the Linux community who would actually pay for DaVinci Resolve. So that's really why I feel they don't make it available for a lot of distributions. And then secondly is the whole technical aspect. So in the whole Linux world, there's many different versions or distributions of Linux. And so it's not as simple as basically you know, Microsoft Windows or Apple Mac, where they primarily have one main version, then they upgrade that over time. Whereas in the whole Linux world, there's so many different varieties of Linux. And so from a technical standpoint, I think it's really challenging. And then in the whole Linux world, whenever people are using DaVinci Resolve, it's for more a commercial environment. You know, it's not really made for the individual end user. And so that's why they use a distribution like Red Hat, which is made to work on that. It has support and it's very stable. And so those are my thoughts on why it's not readily made available for popular individual based Linux distributions and why it's not supported as well in that area. But hopefully this will change in the future because if DaVinci Resolve does work on Ubuntu based distributions and more popular distributions like Linux Mint, then man, this is gonna be the most awesome video editor out there for me and I'm probably not gonna use anything else because I really do enjoy using DaVinci Resolve. 
But other than that, those are my personal pros and cons. And in this case, since it doesn't have anything to do with the video editor, well, at least for me, there's really not any cons. You know, I just wish that it was available in Linux Mint that I could use it there. So then I don't have to use Microsoft Windows. But other than that, if you actually had any thoughts on DaVinci Resolve 17 or any other video editors that you like using, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see some of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, tips, and videos, I do have an entire playlist for that, and I'll leave that in the description area below. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Go Content Creators Group where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group.